Thank you, gentlemen. This is rumor control. Here are the facts. You men have it so easy. You don't know how easy you guys have it. My goodness. All right, guys. <laughs> Let me get that out of there. I'm trying to do this on StreamYard is a pain in the ass. <laughs> there we go. How's it going? <laughs> to cut that out of there. <laughs> Um, today we're going to be talking about whether or not men have it easier than women do, right? Do you have it easier? Do you think you have it easier? Do you think women have it easier than you do? Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about today's topic, I'm going to, I'm going to dig into this, uh, this TikTok video, uh, that's sort of been making the rounds, uh, in the sphere, I guess. And, um, you guys have probably seen this. You've probably seen the girl that's here. I'm just here. I'll just show you real quick. This was the, that's the, the one I will. Oh, is that me? Yeah, there we go. Now you can see me better. Um, and there, much better. So we're going we're gonna to dig into this a little bit. It's a very short TikTok. It's only like a minute long TikTok video. And I wanted to dig into it. And I know some other people have, uh, some other uh, YouTubers, I guess, bloggers, whatever, have been talking about this. Um, I got this from Rich Cooper. Uh, again, it's just sort of like a throwaway tweet that he had. But I thought it was interesting because uh, it speaks to a lot of misconceptions, uh, both on the part of women and on the part of men. Um, I've seen some other people uh, address this uh, just in a couple of instances. Actually, it's maybe it's not as big a deal as everybody's making it out to be, but uh, I thought it was a valuable learning opportunity. So I thought I would make it the topic of today's show. So uh, without further ado, I'm going, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, standard caveats apply here. Okay. I don't know who she is. Uh, this is not a, uh, I'm not putting her on blast. This is not, oh man, Rolo really got her. That's not what I'm, that's not my point here. And you'll see why in just a second. So just for sake of argument, I am, I am following along objective. I'm analyzing this. Okay. I'm not, I'm not attacking her. I'm just analyzing the, the thought pattern here. So, uh, bear with me for just one second. Here we go. Men have it way easier with dating. Let me explain why. Men pick who they pursue versus women pick through who pursued. All right. Did you guys get that? That's a, that's premise number one. Okay. We're going we're gonna to look at this like from a rational. This is the rational male, right? We're going to look at this from a rational perspective here. Men pick who they pursue and women pick through who pursued. Okay. Now, I'm just going to, for sake of argument here, let's, let's just look at her one more time. Uh, I don't know who she is. I don't know who her name is. Uh, I, I wouldn't say she's like a Karen per se, but she certainly has Karen energy. <laughs> uh, the, the big eyes, uh, she certainly was doing this TikTok video um, in her, the outfit she's wearing is definitely planned. This is not just spur of the moment. This is uh, look at, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay. Uh, if I am to kind of pick this whole thing apart, I would say that she is most definitely, I don't know, 29, maybe even her early thirties could be even older than that. I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell today because that could be filtered. In fact, I expect it, it, it would be filtered. So there, let's keep that in mind. We have to keep, kind of keep this in context right now because that's, uh, that's where I'm going with this. Uh, strikes me as if someone who is as someone as a woman who is either uh done with dating or is 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 angry at dating uh not too dissimilar from tommy laren when i did the tommy laren breakdown video i think it was back in august when i when i broke that down she has similar arguments and similar complaints um about why it is so easy for guys and why it is tough for for women to sort of find their way in this big dating sexual marketplace so um let's let's pick those apart though okay men pick who they pursue and women pick through who pursued well, we can, we can certainly throw away the first one. Uh, well, I shouldn't say throw away the first one. Um, we, she, she's going to about to say here that um, it is a societal thing. And this is where most women sort of lose the narrative. 
uh, because they default to blank slate equalism, because they default to social constructionism. This nebulous society is what teaches women and teaches men that they should do the things that they do. It has nothing to do with uh, the fact that uh, there are biological imperatives. It has nothing to do with the fact that men have the burden of performance. It has nothing to do with the fact that women have an inherent intrinsic value. It has nothing to do with the fact that um, you know men must become and women just are. And the problem that most women are finding today, particularly in our new order and our online world and social media world and our Bumble, Hinge, Tinder world, uh, or if you prefer, uh, you know, Match.com, whatever, in that particular world, um, in our Instagram world, right, our brand of me world, um, we're seeing that it's not just societal and it's not just uh, a one-sided conversation. It is a very much a two-sided conversation and it is incumbent upon men to perform. So we have to, uh, the reason I, I, I was talking about how, you know, where she was in life, like obviously in her epiphany phase at this point, obviously frustrated with the sexual marketplace. Uh, obviously, uh, as you'll see here in a moment, um, a, a bit perturbed <laughs> by her lack of quality men in her life and probably uh, also a uh, lack of time that is evaporating uh, quickly for her, or at least she's acknowledging it now. Uh, this woman is a, uh, a an illustration, a textbook example of the epiphany phase, I would argue. I, again, I don't know anything about her personally, but I would say that the reason why women make these videos, including Tommy Lahren, it's because they understand on some level of consciousness that the clock is ticking. And the more time that they spend uh, trying to figure out whether a guy is high quality or low quality or is even uh, a potential suitor, which he's going to say here in just a second, um, that, that, that time runs out. So uh, she's upset that men get to pick who they pursue. Well, I wish that were the case. Because for a vast majority of men, they don't get to pick who they pursue. They can go after it. They can go and approach that. In fact, uh, a lot of, let's say, sub-communities in the manosphere um, have formed uh, their own tribes because of the uh, lack of ability to actually go and pursue or to shame men to, for pursuing in the first place. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot to sort of unpack with that one. Uh, women pick through who pursued. And this is uh, really kind of the crux of her argument here. So what happens is women don't have the high quality guys, the, the high SMV men that they would hope would be pursuing them. And therefore they have a choice between A, B and C who are all high quality guys and they all have their particular talents and, and characteristics and they get to decide which one is the best. Uh, the problem with her argument here is that it's not societal. This is an evolutionary dynamic. Men have always pursued. Uh, eggs are expensive. Sperm is cheap. Men have to perform. Women just are. Women have intrinsic inherent value to men when it comes to reproduction. And that's why when we get into a dating situation, especially a long term. Now, she's, she's characterizing this entire argument based on long term considerations, long term security. Women who are young and don't have to worry when women are in their peak sexual market value years between 21 and 24 or somewhere around there, you don't get this argument. You only get this argument from a 28 year old Tommy Laren. You only get this argument from a uh, 29 to 31 year old woman. I I'm, I'm guessing here. Uh, maybe she's older. Who knows? Maybe she's a good looking 34, but she's upset with her choices at this point because the men that she has to pick through are probably not the guys that she would even consider. And so therefore we're going to foist this uh, responsibility, more responsibility on guys. So I wish it were, I wish that was the case. I wish men got to decide who they were going to pursue. Uh, I'll, I'll continue on a little bit more here, but I think we can also put the, put the lie to this by looking at apps like Bumble where women get to choose. It's women who get to pursue. Uh, pretty much in the online age, it is women who are going to decide who is going to be able to approach them and who is not. Uh, we have uh, we live in an age right now, in a gynocentric age, 
where a man just making a pursu- pursuing a woman is uh, is a, a dangerous prospect in some cases. Um, when we look at, at things like the UK, where uh, misogyny, the uh, the ambiguous definition of whatever misogyny is, uh, which really kind of comes down to beta males should not approach me. Uh, there's well, let's make it illegal for men. I don't want to have anything to do with to actually approach me. That's the that's pretty much the crux of it right there. But again, this is a quality issue. We live in Sadie Hawkins world where women actually are the ones who are going to need to at least take it upon themselves to be proactive. And most are. And that's just the thing. Women become traditionalists when the chips are down, when uh, when they're in their epiphany phase, when they are now acknowledging that the time is getting short. So let's continue here. Big difference. Society says that that the man man pursues the woman. woman. This means that men get to go through an incredibly healthy exercise of looking at all their options, deciding what they want, and then spending the time pursuing that. Versus women are taught to sit back, wait to be pursued, and then from there you decide what you do and do not want from potential suitors coming up to you. Coming on up, bring it on, guys. Come on up. This is the way, right? This, this, this is way more time intensive. Let me paint the picture of why, okay? So here's premise number two. And the premise number two is this, society, society. Whenever you hear women say, or guys for that matter, whenever you hear a feminized mindset, refer to the word society. Society expects this. No, society does not expect that. In fact, a lot of these arguments when it comes to sexual selection, when it comes to uh, men's performance, when it comes to uh, women not having the, you know, uh, what is it, economically attractive men be, you know, suddenly available to them like Sheryl Sandberg said they would be when they're 30, uh, suddenly they're not there. It's not society that did that. In fact, if anything, today's society, if you watch the Grammys, man, today's society is encouraging almost the opposite of this very traditional, you know, um, expectations, let's say. When I hear of women talking about slut shaming or I hear about um, uh, how horrible men or the expectations that society has on women when it comes to beauty standards, when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, be this, be that, uh, be thin, be, be curvy, be whatever. It's like, uh, I, I watched a, uh, an Instagram video not too long ago of some woman, a very butch, you know, short haired kind of Karen looking woman going through what are, as far as I can tell are very old arguments. Society says this, society expects women to be this, society expects women to just sit back and wait for suitors to come along. No, society absolutely does not do that anymore. It's the same argument when people say, well, um, boys are uh, taught by, you know, uh, drill sergeants and and they're, they're, they're taught not to cry and they're smack, yeah, smacked upside the head. Johnny, toughen up, man, stop being a wuss. You know, that doesn't happen. Sorry, that, that's not something that is actively encouraged and hasn't been at least for the last 20 years and probably that I would argue maybe the last 30 years. So let's say 25, let's see since 1995 ish, there's been a, a, a push to feminize boys to emotional to, to push for emotionalism. And that's where we're at right now. Um, to say that women in you know, young girls or women are expected to have these traditional mindsets or the, you know, be, be coy and be, be nice and wait, wait for, you know, uh, please the man, blah, blah, blah. That hasn't been around really since the seventies. There's been a, a system systemic, systematic, whatever push for women to not be male pleasing. Let's just say the, the, the prime directive of feminism is to, um, is to never do anything for the express pleasure of a man. So to say that society is causing this well what society is that western society that argument anytime you hear the word society come out of a woman's mouth or a feminized men's mouth understand that that is the voice of social constructionism that is an argument that is that is rooted in social constructionism and blank slate equalism 
because what it's saying is that society is like it's nature and nurture but in this case it's all nurture it's all learning it's all society it's uh you you know you you are the product of whatever society that you are uh you know produced from when especially when it comes to intersexual dynamics we can point to evolutionary reasons for why men pursue and women choose men perform women choose from them that's that's really how it's been in the animal kingdom for a long time any anyone who has the uh the sex that has the higher reproductive cost is usually the one that's doing the selecting what she's complaining about is not having high quality enough suitors to come and you know save her from herself i guess i don't know or you know to to complete her mating strategy which of course for women is hypergamy alpha seed beta need and at this stage as things develop and she's not wrong about this part right here well she's saying you know she's going to say it, you know it's it's time intensive to to wait around to wait for the right guy and she's not wrong the problem is is she's only coming to this conclusion pretty late in the game and this is true of most women now how do i know well i i mean we can we can sort of refer back to when uh, my appearances on uh myron uh gaines show of uh, the fresh and fit podcast when we have uh, a variety of different women come on that show and you can talk to women as young as 19 and as old as say 37 and you will get a a different sort of a difference in opinion when it comes to this particular topic like who's got it easier right? well in the beginning when women are between say like 19 and 24 women most definitely have it a whole lot easier when you have bided your time and waited it out and you're now in your epiphany phase between 29 and 31 well guess what you're in a less selective position ladies than you were when you were 21 years old and the new crop of 21 year olds that have just come into the sexual marketplace are now displacing you from that so you can foist that blame and that responsibility off on infantile men or uh you can claim that it's men who have it easier than you do but don't blame it on society okay not at least not entirely because when you talk about society this and society that you are essentially making an appeal to blank slate equalism and you are making an appeal to social constructionism it's not just society let's continue this is way more time intensive and let me paint a picture of why a man who comes up to you and you decide there's some things he likes some things you don't know about you go ahead and give him a chance after getting to know him for two weeks you decide it's not right for you that means you just spent two weeks on somebody that you may or may not have picked out of a crowd to begin with and a lot of us women don't even realize that this is happening because this is just the way things are so Apologies, you're probably getting echo on that. But anyways, you get the you get the picture here. This is the voice of, of the epiphany phase. This I, and understand that this I, I the epiphany phase is this when women get to two, uh, in case you're unfamiliar with my work, um, when women get to the age of, say, about 29 to 31, some people will argue later, some say sooner. But let's just say round, round numbers, 29 to 31 years old is when women begin to acknowledge whether cognitively or subconsciously, however, they acknowledge that they are no longer able to compete in the sexual marketplace as well as when they did when they were younger. So it's not saying, ladies, you're hitting the wall. I've done lots of lots of videos about the wall. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm not saying physically. Physically, she looks pretty attractive. You know, she's all right. I would on the Tomasi scale, I'd give her at least a seven, maybe a seven and a half. Uh, you might go higher, you might go lower. I don't know, but that's me. That there, there we are. Okay. Now, when she gets to be 29 to 31 years old, that's when women usually try to change their tune. I don't know what her notch count is. I don't know what her body count is. I do know this though. When I was on uh, the Fresh Fit podcast, we had some girls in there who were, excuse me, between the age of 19 and 21 one one 20 year old girl was saying that between 16 when she first had sex to 20 years old she has 15 lovers in four years from 16 to 20. so that's the women are getting started earlier and earlier but maybe that's neither here nor there the fact of the matter is is that there is a window of opportunity that women have where things are much easier for them to attract the kind of guys that they want to 
to get with. The problem is, is that society, a gynocentric social order, teaches women that, in fact, it's not about uh, waiting out for the right guy. It is opportunism. Get with the guy that you can get with while you are hot, sexy, fun. And then when you get to be 29 to 31 years old, there'll be uh, a guy there waiting for you to uh, sort of make everything happen for you in the long term. This is what I call Sandbergian hypergamy because Sheryl Sandberg actually literally mentions this. Ladies, when you are between the ages of like say 18 and 28 or 29, that's when uh, you should date all the fun guys, all the bad for you guys, all the bad boys, all the commitment phobic boys. I mean, literally she says this, date the committed, pho- the commitophobes, right? <laughs> date the guys who are, uh, you know, the bad boy rock band drummer, motorcycle gang guys. I mean, th- have fun and then, but don't marry those guys. <laughs> which is it's kind of ironic but so anyways but when you get to be 30 then that's when you should start looking for the guy who wants an equal partner the guy who wants to do his fair share to to find the basically find the beta and waiting who's right there who's ready to sort of uh take you you know sort of save you from yourself before you get to before you get to 30 or just like right after 30. and this of course coincides with the average age of first marriage for women well for women it's usually about 28.7 i believe it was and it's 29 something for 29.8 or something like that for men uh it's older depending on the country that you're in of course but Funny how it coincides with the epiphany phase. And the epiphany phase is this, is that women tend to want to get right with God. They tend to want to do things differently. That's when they start having these traditional um, existential crises, crises, right? When, when they get to be 29 to 31 years old. Where are the nice guys? What happened to the good guys? You won't hear that from women. You won't hear where are the good guys? Where are the nice guys? Where are the where are the guys ready to settle down from women who are say 20, 22, 24? You won't hear it from them. You will hear it from women who are 29, 30, 31, maybe 33, somewhere around there. That's when that frustration sinks in because it, as she says, it is incredibly hard for women to do that because it's a waste of time. Ow, what she, and she's correct here. We're going, we're going to actually give her a point. The point is this, is that hypergamy cannot afford to miss out on a good opportunity. So when a woman is between the ages of say 21 and 24, the priorities are different. It's all the alpha seed short-term sexual side of that hypergamous equation. It's all about, uh, that's it. Find the hot guy, find the fun guy, the hot guy in the foam cannon party, right? Find the guy who's hot and fun and sexy and you really want to get with them and hopefully you'll be able to lock him down at some point. That's the, that's the mating strategy for that, that time period, the hoe phase, right? But when you get to be about 29 to 31 years old, boy, the chips are down then because you can't, like a woman who is 33 years old realizes at some point along the way that she cannot compete with her 23-year-old self in the same sexual marketplace. But don't worry about it, ladies. There's all kinds of social conventions ready to sort of make you feel better about yourself and your predicament. And this is why you get videos like this. Hypergamy cannot afford to miss a golden opportunity. And it takes time. It takes time for women to understand whether this guy is for real or he's not. It's very hard. Hypergamy would love it as a mating strategy. Hypergamous women, hypergamy, would love it if they could just find the turnkey guy, find the perfect guy and go, you know what, I'm, I'm getting you and we're going on and here, here we go. That would be perfect. Uh, uh, was it Rich Cooper has said in the past, uh, women don't care about your struggles as a man. They only wait at the finish line and they bang the winners. Well, not every woman can do that. Women have to make bets on guys. They have to use that feminine intuition. It's what I call the hypergamous filter to find out whether this guy is the real deal or not whether he's going to be a winner. Is he, does he have the potential to get across the finish line? Does he, is he going to be more than he is right now when he's 35 or 36 years old? That's the bet. That's the, and it's a, that's an existential bet for women because if it doesn't work out, there, there's a lot of investment in that. In fact, that's what she says right here is like, you invest all this time in this guy and it doesn't work out. And now I'm screwed because I spent all this time trying to get to know this guy and to develop a relationship that I didn't really want to have. And so therefore, you know, I'm screwed. Well, yeah, because men and women are different. We have different mating strategies. 
Men tend to be more R selected. Women are K selected. What that means is men left to our own devices, our innate mating strategies to spread the seed. Unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. We would love that very much. That's why pornography, free 4K streaming pornography on Pornhub or wherever you want to look at it. That's why it's free. That's why it's popular because it appeals to men's innate mating strategy. I don't think that there's any question about that. For women, it's different. Women are looking for a case selection. They're looking for the quality. They're looking for the guy who is going to be both genetic quality and provisioning quality. That's alpha seed and beta need. And when the chips are down, that's when women get frustrated because they understand that there is a lot of investment and a lot, basically a real, a lifetime investment in that presumption that they are getting accurate information from that guy trying to figure out what they want to do. And so in a way she's right, right? She says, so it's incredibly distracting to figure out what you want when you are in the process of this kind of dating. Yes, it is. When you're your age, honey, when you are that, when you are that old, yes, because now you have less time to figure that out because the 22 year old, which you were 10 years ago, that's when you needed to start thinking about these things. That's if, you, if, if this is going to be an imperative for you, and most women aren't mature enough to really understand that when they're 21, 22, they're just happy that they're at the top of their game at that point. Figuratively speaking, let's just say. They're happy to be at that point. But the problem that women like this have is they realize that the time is running out. Also, when it comes to the biological clock, my biological clock is ticking, yes. That's when you, the only time you will hear that from women is not when they're 21 or 22, it's when they're 32. It's when women get to be about in that same epiphany phase. My biological clock is ticking. I got to find a guy. Any guy will do. I got to get married. It's not, I want to marry him. It's, I need to be married. I need to find a man. The man who, hey, come over here. <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's not, that's the difference. I've said this before. That's the difference between I want to marry him and I want to be married. I want to have kids or I want to have his kids. If you're going to have his kids, you should be looking for his kids or him when you're in your 20s, when you're in your mid 20s, at least at the very least, 24 at the latest, right? That's when you should start considering this, not when you're a little bit older, not when you're frustrated about this kind of stuff. And so, of course, it makes for a great one minute TikTok video, but in the end, you, you're, you're where you're at. So uh, let's continue. I get there's just a little bit left uh, on this. I'm going to put this out. And... So it's incredibly distracting to figure out what you want when you're in the process of this kind of dating. Men. All right. So that's the whole thing. My bad. Let me, I thought there was more to it. <laughs> okay. So she's frustrated and, and rightfully so because she waited. She waited too long. You know, I'm not saying she's, you know, hey, come on in, guys. I'm not saying she's bound for cats and boxed wine and Ben and Jerry's. I'm not saying that at all. She looks like she's in fairly good shape. She looks like she should be able to at least command some attention. She She's certainly not the average American woman who is overweight and, you know, five foot six and looks like a beach ball. And that's statistically true. <laughs> she looks good. And she looks like she's trying to maximize her potential for as old as she is. So when women get to that age, yes, they get very, very frustrated about this stuff. Um, and it is time intensive. And the reason why she's, she's frustrated is because she knows that their time is running out. That's, that's basically hypergamy in a nutshell. The time is running out. And when you get to 29, 30, 31 years old, the, the priorities change. And if you've read my second book, which is The Rational Male Preventive Medicine, there is this lovely timeline in here. And in that timeline, uh, as you can see, right around the 30 year mark, that's when women start looking for long term po positioning themselves in the long term, right? As you can see, I've got the epiphany phase, transition phase, and you've got the security phase right there uh, between the ages of say like about 28, maybe 26, somewhere around 27, 27 to about 36, somewhere and they're looking for security because they realize on some level of consciousness that they will not be able to compete in the sexual marketplace as well as they did when they were in their 20s. Uh, was Royce has said this in the past is like he had a, he, Royce had this really great uh, article one time and I think it was called The Difficulty of Gaming Women by Age Brackets. 
And so it was like 18 to like 24 was one and then 24 up to like 30, 31. And then, you know, and on through right up until about four, I think like 36 or 38 was where he stopped. And that, that was it. Like no, no women are worth dating after that. Right. Um, but the ease with which game is sort of applied to those particular demographics, those age demographics is all dependent on the priorities that women have during that time. And uh, a lot of preventive medicine sort of, uh, I, I guess, parallels that. Like, what can you expect from women at different ages? Right now, she's frustrated because her lack of options and the amount of time that is needed to invest in figuring out whether those options are something she wants to participate in or not. Most women don't look like her when they get to that age. Now, again, I don't know how old she is. Maybe she's 28. Who knows? Maybe she's 38. Who knows? But she talks as if she is very concerned with the <laughs> labor intensity, let's just say, of, of uh, trying to find the right guy. So, gentlemen, bear this in mind. I'm going to read a, an email here in just a second because it kind of fits, it kind of locks in with this as well. And, and um, actually, I think I'll just read it right now. I have, I got, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name names because I don't know that he wants me to read this, but uh, let's see. He said uh, on the Fresh Fit podcast or program, uh, Mr. Kevin Samuel said something along the lines of women have inherent value while men do not. Uh, and then, of course, he says, in my country, uh, sex-based abortions are prevalent, which reveals that we aren't inherently valued. Granted, the rates uh, have been decreasing. Okay. Uh, so my question is this. How does Mr. Samuel's statement align with the reality uh, in my country, right? Okay. Or is he talking within the context of Western cultures? All right. Well, here's, here's my, I, I want, culturally, contextually speaking, uh, really what you're saying is like, you know, um, I, I guess you could sort of make a comparison to like China's one child policy and uh, boys were preferred. Now it's not because there is a glut of males in China. And so therefore females have, you know, higher value as a result of decades of the one child policy. Well, so you could say, well, you know, they're aborting these kids by, by, by sex. Or I've, I've read articles where feminists have said we should uh, abort boy babies because we need less men in the world because they're the ones who start the wars and all that great stuff, right? They're, they're violent, you know, potential, you know, abusers, let's just say, which is kind of silly to me. But let's talk about the inherent value because I don't think that a lot of guys really realize this. Now, again, I'm not going to speak for Kevin Samuels because I don't, I, I specifically, I get what he's saying generally is what I'm going to say is that generally speaking, um, men are disposable. Men are the ones who are expected at to, for, you know, uh, really tribal or genetic altruism is really something, a kin affiliation and kin altruism is something that's usually expected of men. From an evolutionary perspective, um, women are the incubators of the next generation. And so therefore they have intrinsic value. Therefore we have what I've uh, called anyways, uh, the male protector dynamic, which is put yourself in front of harm's way uh, or into harm's way to protect women and to protect children. That's something that is instinctual, I think, to our human male brains, um, instinctively anyways. So, so there's that aspect of it. The evolutionary aspect of inherent value of women is something I think that's kind of hardwired or baked into uh, the you know, intersexual experience of human beings. So there is that. Now, what I think, um, what I think Kevin Samuels was talking about and what the, my email guy was talking about here is that, um, women's value is, uh, as far as sexual market value is something that they conflate with their own personal value. However, the w women are valuable just for being women for most guys. So this girl right here, probably wouldn't have any trouble getting with a guy who is beta, who is l low on the SMV scale. Her frustration isn't so much about finding the right guy. It's the guys that are coming to her. The guys who are supposed to be picking her aren't the guys that she wants to be picking her. And in a gynocentric social order, what we do is we legislate. So we legislate laws and, and whether it's harassment or it's, you know, uh, what day gamers on, on the streets of the, of London, uh, whatever it is, we're, or, or um, men being uh, held accountable for um, 
let's just say unwanted or like for lack of consent, sexual consent, if they say they are a lawyer or they are a surgeon or whatever, and it turns out that after they've had sex with a woman, that that woman or that that guy is actually a barista or a sandwich artist at Subway. There, we want to legislate against men being able to misrepresent themselves as something more than they are. That's why PUA, that's why game, that's why anything where guys get together and we compare notes, that's why that is threatening to a gynocentric female primary social order. Because if men can do that, what they can do is find an end run around that, that hypergamous filter. And that's exactly what she's talking about here. She's not frustrated so much with men, but she's frustrated with the, the fact that she can't get the kind of guy she needs to get right now. I, I'm at the finish line. I'm waiting for the winner. Where's the winner? This is the kind of woman who, rather than making a bet in her 20s with a guy who had potential, she's the one who has sort of put guys off and, and has, has been... Um, like, I don't want to call her spinster because I don't know if she's a spinster, but she's the kind of woman who's like frustrated with her position in life right now because she wants to move on. She wants to have babies. She wants to have a, a guy in her life. She really wants that. But she's at a position right now where she thinks the winner is she's waiting at the finish line and none of the winners want her. None of the guys that are good enough want her. They want the girl who's 22 years old. They want the girl that she used to be back in her whole phase. And that's what throws women off. And that's where they kind of lose the narrative. Now, because women have this intrinsic inherent value, they think that it's men's fault for not seeing their one their wonderfulness because of their her beauty. She looks good, you know. Their her her high quality. I I'm I'm here. I'm ready. Okay, now I'm ready, world. And the world, you know, of men don't want to have anything to do with her. So yeah, when guys get to pursue who they want to, she's upset with that. Because the guys her age or the guys who would be older than she is don't want to have anything to do with a woman who is where she is in life right now. Now, there might be guys who are like simps or there might be guys who are blue pill or beta or whatever you want to call it, who are her age, but she doesn't want to get with those guys. Because when she does, she finds that she's wasting her time. Those guys come into her life and, oh, hey, they're players. They're not players. They just want to bang you or because you're an easy lay. You're easy right there. You were, you were low hanging fruit. Let's just say ladies, don't be low hanging. fruit. <laughs> so you got that, or you've got, you've got that, the choice of that guy who is going to make you a plate because now at 36 years old, that guy's hitting his stride because any guy who's still single at that time, he's got it. He's in a position of sexual selection that women were at when they were 22, 23 years old. And if you look in the, uh, let's see, the preventive medicine, if you look at the graph that I have where women's, uh, the bell curve for women's sexual market value, and it tops out right around 23 years old. For men, it tops out right around 36 or 37 years old, because that's when men tend to have the most uh, of what makes them potentially the most attractive to women at that particular time in their lives. So this woman is venting her frustration because she's at the finish line and she's waiting. She's where it's aware of the winners. Well, the winners are here, at least the single ones are anyways, but they don't want to have anything to do with her because now the ones, the guys, the high value guys don't have to select her. They can select a younger woman or a woman who is, is less sort of self-absorbed <laughs> and they are a hundred percent right to do so because they're looking out for their own best interests. And maybe if they want to have children themselves, that's not what they're looking. They have they have matured to the point where they have a better sense of uh, judgment of character of women, and they have better sexual selection. So, what is it that makes you more desirable? Well, yes, it's going to take longer for you to figure that out. Women are case selected. They're looking for quality. When, like I said, the the alpha, the apex alpha comes along, women can't waste that opportunity. Well, what she's saying is, I want that apex alpha when I need it right now. And if there's a societal push for anything, it's convincing women that men have to do that. They're entitled to those apex alpha men, again, alpha with, as an abstraction, at that particular time in their lives. All the chips are down. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to screw around anymore. I, I need the winner to come across the finish line and marry me now. And that it, it's, all, it's, it's much too late. And even for very good looking women. Even for women who have this, you know, have her look, whatever. She, obviously, she's doing this on TikTok. So, so there you have it. Um, that's my sort of breakdown. Um, 
last but not least, I wanted to make sure that you guys understand what I meant by inherent value when it comes to women and it comes to men. Uh, men must perform, women just are. When I say that, what that is, is what that means is women have inherent value until they don't, until they get to, until it's used up, until it is not the agency producing value that it has been for a long time. So a lot of guys, particularly in the black pill community or the MGTOW community or whatever, want to say, well, women like, a woman like her, she can just spread her legs and she can have any girl, any guy she wants. Yeah, that is true. But here we have an example of a woman who by, by, their, by that definition could certainly do that. But she's not. She's venting her frustration on TikTok or on a one minute video because those guys she doesn't want those guys she doesn't want that attention she doesn't want those particular like she can have anybody but she doesn't want just anybody because women's mating strategies and women's sexual imperatives and their mating imperatives are different than men's so when you think like that you're thinking like a guy and you're projecting that that ideal onto women stop doing that women have a different motive they have a different purpose when it comes to their own mating strategies because eventually women's mating strategies become their life strategies. So when a, a, a girl is at 33 years old, her, her priorities are different because the time is running out. She's got to find that guy. And that's, that's a really dangerous place to be, by the way, gentlemen, because if you are say 36 years old, um, there are plenty of social conventions that are in place that have been around for a long time to convince you that it is your it is incumbent upon you if you want to be a real man quote unquote register trademark if you want to be a real man you have to wife these girls up save them from themselves save them from their choices save them from their conditions save them from the consequences that they incurred when they were in their 20s when they were out i'm not saying that she i, I don't know anything about her sexual past i don't know what her notch count is whatever but i do know this is that it's not about what society made her, it's what her imperatives were and what society facilitated for her to get to the point where she is on TikTok and she is complaining about the quality of guys. So this is not a this is not a general statement on do men have it easier, do women have it easier? This entire video is I can't find the right guy. I can't find the quality guy that I deserve or that a female primary society assured me that I am entitled to and he's not here. So there you have it. I will talk to you guys later. Uh, I'll be doing some other shorts uh, later on in this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.